is a very, very important verse. It's helped me for many years in my life. The margin of my Bible, you know, sometimes you find a word written in the margin. The meaning of that is the Greek language in which the New Testament was written has got a different shade of meaning which cannot be expressed in one word. Here it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. In the margin of my Bible it says, let the peace of Christ act as a referee in your heart. A referee. And you know what a referee does in a soccer game or whatever games you play here? He blows a whistle. Hey, there's a foul. Bring that ball back here. Start the game. And you can't score a goal after that, sorry. The foul was committed. Bring the ball back here to where the foul was committed and start the game, continue the game from here. Referee blow the whistle. And here it says, the peace of Christ, when you lose it in your heart, the rest has gone. It's a referee blowing the whistle saying, something is wrong in your life. Maybe you hurt somebody and you need to go and apologize to that person. Maybe you need to call up someone and say, I'm sorry for what I said or what I did. Please forgive me. The peace has gone from your heart. The referee is blowing a whistle. Settle it. Maybe the Lord's showing you something, a wrong attitude that you had towards somebody. And the Lord says, confess it to me. As soon as some unrest comes into your heart, my brother and sister, the referee has blown the whistle. Confess it. Immediately the blood will cleanse you. You come to rest again. We must live in the rest of God 24-7. As soon as you slip up, get up. Just like you fall on the road. You slip, fell down, get up. Don't wait. I followed that rule for a number of years in my life. You know, when we are agitated in our heart, I tell people that's the time to keep our lips closed. Close your lips and don't open your mouth. Because if you speak to anybody when you're agitated in your heart, words will come out of your mouth which you will regret sometimes for years. Proverbs says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And we have spurted out so much death in the past with our tongue. Let's not do that anymore. And one way not to do that anymore is, whenever you're agitated about anything in your heart, keep your mouth shut. And at home, for example, if there's a little conflict between husband and wife, and one is, maybe one is at rest, but the other is agitated, don't open your mouth. Simple rule. Never open your mouth when the referee is blowing a whistle. Hey, there's unrest, 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 the referee, there's a foul. Don't open your mouth, bring the ball back to this spot and start again. How do we bring the ball back to the spot? Confess your sin to God, cleanse it in the blood of Jesus, then continue kicking the ball. So this is a very important law to always be at rest. That Sabbath rest which God wanted Adam to live in on the seventh day and which says in Hebrews 4, let us fear lest we don't live in this rest 24-7. You can live in that 24-7 and you don't have to be a mature saint. A five-year-old can come to his mom and say, Mom, I'm sorry. I told you a lie. You don't have to be a very mature saint to do that. You can go to your husband or wife and say, I'm sorry, darling, for the way I spoke. That wasn't right. It was really wrong. Please forgive me. I'm battling. I'm struggling. I'm trying to become more like Jesus. Can you imagine what that will do to your marriage? It will cement it together. Let's learn to do that so that we never lose that rest. I've decided long ago that I will not come out of that rest. I don't want to continue kicking the ball when the referee blew the whistle 10 days ago. There are people who live with an unrest in their heart for 10 days. The game is not continuing. The game is at a standstill. That means there's no spiritual progress in your life. There's no spiritual progress because it's something you have not settled. Please follow this simple rule in your homes. Even if it's an unconverted person in your office and you did something wrong, go to him and say, excuse me, sir, I'm sorry for what I did wrong. 